Hello, year 11. We're going to look at acids and bases. What you need to know for your exam is the definition of an acid and base. You need to be able to describe neutralisation in word equations and symbol equations. You also need to be able to describe how to separate a salt from a solution. The first thing we're going to look at is what an acid is. So you'll have come across this before, but an acid has a pH of below 7. When acids dissolve in water, they produce H plus ions which are positively charged, H+. Plus. The more hydrogen ions there are in solution, the stronger the acid is and the lower the pH is. A base is something that which, which will neutralise an acid. You will have called them alkalis in the past. Alkalis are a group of bases. If a base dissolves, we call it an alkali. For example, sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Now, if a base dissolves, it will produce hydroxide ions, which are OH-. Um, they are negatively charged. This means the pH of the solution is above 7. And the more OH- ions there are, the higher the pH. You can tell if a substance is an acid or alkali using two methods. The first is an indicator which will change colour depending on the pH of the solution. We can use litmus indicator which turns red in acid or blue in alkali. We can use universal indicator which will turn red in acid, green neutral and blue or purple in an alkali. We can also use a pH probe, which is a digital measurement, which is more accurate and will give us a, give us a value, for example, 4.1. The pH scale runs from 0 to 14, 0 being the strongest acid, the highest concentration of H plus ions, and 14 being the highest concentration of OH minus ions. The diagram shows common substances and their pH. Water is pH 7, soap generally pH 8 or 9, lemon juice pH 2. There are three types of acid that you need to know about. Sulfuric acid which could also be called hydrogen sulfate, H2 SO4. Hydrochloric acid, which also could be called hydrogen chloride, HCl, and nitric acid, or hydrogen nitrate, which is HNO3. All acids contain hydrogen ions. The other part of the acid is a negative ion, and we'll talk about these in a little while. Metal oxides tend to be bases, so for example, copper oxide, um, Magnesium oxide. Metal hydroxides are also bases. NaOH, sodium hydroxide. MgOH2, magnesium hydroxide. And calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. These are common bases that you'll come across in your exam. Neutralisation is the reaction between an acid, H+, and an alkali, OH-. Therefore, we can write an equation, H+, plus plus OH- minus makes H2O. If you're asked for a definition of neutralisation in an exam, you can write this equation. When we, we react an acid and a base, we always form salt and water. Now the salt depends upon the acid that you use and the base that you use. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, will form sulfates. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, will form chlorides. And nitric acid, HNO3, will form 
nitrates. Let's look at some examples. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus sodium hydroxide, NaOH, will form water, H2O, plus sodium chloride. The sodium comes from the base and the chloride comes from the acid. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, if we react that with um, potassium hydroxide, KOH, that will form potassium sulfate, K2SO4, and H2O, as always. Nitric acid, HNO3, let's react that with Magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2, that will form magnesium nitrate, MgNO3, 2 plus H2O. We can balance that equation up by putting a 2 there and a 2 in front of the water. Now, metals will react with acids to form a salt plus hydrogen. For example, magnesium will react with hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen. So the chloride is formed because it's hydrochloric acid. Iron will react with sulfuric acid to form iron sulfate plus hydrogen. We make iron sulfate because we have sulfuric acid. Calcium would react with nitric acid to form calcium nitrate and hydrogen. Ammonia, NH3, will react with water to form ammonium hydroxide. This is because the ammonia accepts a hydrogen ion from water to form NH4 plus and OH minus. Therefore ammonia is a base. If we react ammonia with nitric acid we will form ammonium nitrate which has a formula NH4 NO3 ammonium nitrate is used to spread on fields to act as a fertilizer we can separate salts formed from a solution using a very simple method if we mix our acid and alkali or our base together we will form a salt and water we can filter to remove any unsoluble substances. We can then add our solution to an evaporating basin, heat slowly, the water will evaporate and leave the salt. We're going to look at concentrations of solutions now. This is information you'll need for C3 in June. However, we're going to look at that now to look at how we can work out the concentration of acids and alkalis. The first thing you need to know is the units for concentration are moles per decimeter cubed. Now, a decimeter cubed is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters or a liter. So we're working out the moles that which dissolve per liter to give us a concentration. However, in your exam, we need to use the unit decimeter cubed or dm cubed. We can work out concentrations depending on the amount of moles that we dissolve in each decimeter cube. If we dissolve one mole of a substance in one decimeter cube, we get a solution that has a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed. If we dissolved half a mole of a substance in half a litre, we would also get a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed.
you may be asked to calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. Now, I'm going to give you an example. There is an equation that needs to use, which is concentration equals moles divided by volume divided by a thousand. Now, we divide that by a thousand because you're usually given that volume in centimeters cubed and you need to convert it into decimeters cubed. To do that, you divide by a thousand. I'm going to give you an example of a calculation to work out the concentration of a solution. For example, if you were given a one mole of a substance, to work out the concentration, you do one mole divided by the volume that you dissolve it in. So, for example, if you had 500 millilitres of water, 500 divided by 1,000 would equal 1 over 0 0.5 which would equal 2 moles per decimeter cubed. That is your concentration. If you were given 1 mole to dissolve in 250 millilitres, you do 1 mole divided by 250 over 1,000. That would give you 1 divided by 0 0.25, and that would give you a concentration of 4 moles per decimeter cubed.